Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. Today on the pod, we've got author Bora Chung. Her short story collection is called Cursed Bunny, originally published in Korean. It's now translated into English. The book is full of wild trips into different genres. So I was surprised to learn that one of her stories is actually based on a true thing that happened to her. She tells NPR's Aisha Roscoe about how one time when she was 28, she had this medical issue where her period just would not stop. I'll let her tell the rest of it, but she points out how cultural mores over motherhood and pregnancy got in the way of her ability to receive her own health care, which strikes me as the perfect backdrop for a horror story. A girl whose brother feeds on her blood. Robots that take revenge on their owner and a bunny lamp with a deadly curse. Those are some of the bizarre, twisted plot lines in Cursed Bunny, Bora Chung's first collection of short stories to appear in English, which was shortlisted for the International Booker Prize. It was translated from Korean by Anton Herr. Author Bora Chung joins us now to talk about her collection. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So you've described these stories as, quote, like a fairy tale, but with a little bit of a Korean twist. Can you talk about what that means? They definitely felt like fairy tales to me. Fairy tales, um, usually the European ones that we are kind of used to in the English speaking world has a certain way of plot development. And I really love that structure. So I try to use it um, whenever it seems fun. And I add a Korean reality, the things that I see or the things that I heard from somebody else. And with that kind of magical twist to it, and I hope that adds some fresh elements to the familiar structure. One of your stories also deals with like robots and artificial intelligence, which everyone is talking about these days. And, you know, AI is advancing so quickly. Like, do you think that society is too dependent on technology? And also, do we mistreat the technology as we give it more and more lifelike responsibilities? Uh, From what I read, human beings really don't understand what we created. And artificial intelligence and deep learning, machine learning, all these things are structured so that the machine would accumulate experience and data and information and analyze them and draw conclusions more like human beings do. So that means um, our prejudices, our misconceptions, our own hate and misunderstanding and discrimination is part of the data human beings created. So technology is not impartial. Information is not neutral. And that is backfiring and that will backfire. But probably engineers don't agree with me. So yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of machines. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's pretty much it's the Frankenstein issue, right? Yeah. Or Frankenstein's monster, right? Like you create something that you don't have any understanding of, and then it terrorizes you because it's dangerous to create things you don't understand, right? Or to play God. Um, It's less dangerous if you are aware that you're never going to understand this. I think Isaac Asimov said something to that effect. But as long as we believe that we are gods, that we've created this, so this thing will always listen to me and do as I say, then we are walking into deeper trouble. Yeah. Well, that definitely happened in that story. Um, You know, in a lot of your stories, I found the theme of women and the autonomy over their bodies and kind of like the horror and the tension that can come from not only just like what your body creates intentionally or unintentionally and the way society reacts to it. Like what what were you trying to get at with some of those stories? Well, I guess. We're talking about the embodiment. And I found the head, too. So the head is about creations. And then embodiment is about a a girl who gets pregnant through her birth control somehow. She gets pregnant. And then it goes from there. Um, For the record, contraceptive pills do not make you pregnant. Contraceptive pills are safe. They're good things. (laughs) They Um, are safe. They are safe. They're good things. But in this book... (laughs) 
Yeah, it's just in my particularly perverted story, the person gets <laughs> pregnant. Um, so, yeah, listen to your doctor. Um, yes. <laughs> well, when I was 28, I had an ovarian cyst and my period wouldn't stop. And I went to see a gynecologist. Well, I told my mom. And the first thing my mom said was, you're not married. You're not going to go see a gynecologist by yourself. Oh, wow. Um, I was 28 and I was bleeding for two weeks. I couldn't stand up. And the first thing my mom said was, no, you're not going to go see a doctor because you're not married. So that felt really strange. But that was very Asian. That was very, very Korean. And I think that stigma is still very well alive to this day, unfortunately. And my own doctor was very kind. She was very friendly, <laughs> for the record. And I got a prescription, and my ovarian cyst went away with time. But if you just you refuse to go see a doctor, it could be very, very catastrophic. So this is something that is happening to your body, and it's like having a toothache. Nobody tells you you can't go see a dentist because you're not married. If you are alive and have functioning organs, then you should take care of that. It should be very simple. But because the question of pregnancy is that attached to it, society just dumps all kinds of weird meanings to your organs. And I thought, well, I'm going to write a story about it. But the thing I also thought was that men could decide whether they wanted to be a father or not, whereas the woman in this case who was pregnant just had to deal with it. I mean, um, you can get an abortion or whatever, but in this case, the woman was having the baby and she didn't have a choice in that. She didn't, couldn't decide whether she wanted to be pregnant or not in this story, right? Whereas the men were able to say, I don't know what I want to do, right? Yeah, and I wanted to skip that part about deciding whether to keep the baby or not because um, I wanted to talk about a woman having a baby alone. And in South Korea, there's a ridiculous amount of stigma attached to it, and the baby is discriminated the mo moment they're born. Um, their birth certificate has to say whether the parents are married or not. So I wanted to address that too. And that problem is very particular to Korea and only Korea, I really hope. Yeah, I think it's probably more than just Korea, but it is a big issue. Like being a single mother is a, is a big issue um, all over. Well, I mean, what do you hope that English readers will get from this book? You have a beautiful story in there uh, called The Reunion where you talk about, you know, what ties us to this world. What, what do you hope will tie readers to this book? I have no idea. I never imagined my book would reach anywhere outside Korea. So th this is all very unreal to me. I feel like I'm in the middle of my own story and my own stories don't really have a happy ending. So I'm <laughs> probably in trouble. Um, I don't know. But this one will have a happy ending because this is a great book. This is a beautiful book, and I don't say that lightly, so this will have a good ending. Thank you. That was Bora Chung, author of the short story collection, Curse Bunny. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and have fun with my bunny. Oh, I know. That bunny is, woo! That bunny. I said, I mean, when he started chopping on the brain, I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs>